Hello and welcome to a look at working out the variance of a single asset or investment with me, Andy Duncan, here at Finlingo.com. If I have a single investment, which could be one share in one company or 10 million shares across 10,000 companies, I'd like to know how much I can expect it to go up or down over a particular period. There are two main measures for this. The first is the asset's variance, which I'll be covering shortly, and the second is the standard deviation or volatility, which I'll talk about in a separate video. Fortunately, both terms are intimately related related. The variance is the square of a standard deviation, and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So as promised in this video, let's do the variance. Here's a typical financial analysis exam question on Finlingo. You'll generally get a table of numbers which gives you much more than you need to answer a single variance question. The three important pieces of information on this screen are the word population, which could have been sample, plus the total number of returns, or n, which in this case is 5, and then the sum of the variance column, which is 85. 5.7557. Here's the two equations we might need to answer such a question. For questions which talk about a population, you need this equation. So the population variance, or sigma squared, is equal to the sum of the variance column divided by the total number of readings in the population. Notice when we use population data, we use the Greek symbol sigma to stand for standard deviation. For questions on samples, you need a looser equation because there's more uncertainty in the data. So that's the sample variance, or S squared is equal to the sum of the variance column divided by the total number of sample readings minus 1, which gives you a larger result. Fortunately, you'll notice that when we use sample data, we use the Latin symbol S to stand for the standard deviation. But this is just notation and isn't necessary to answer the question. So let's take another look at the information just to note down the three key pieces of information. So that's population, 5 and 85.7557. Now let's transfer that to our equation page. So the population variance variance is equal to 85.7557 divided by 5. And the sample variance, if we'd been asked that, would be equal to 85.7557 divided by 5 minus 1, which is of course 4. I've put together a simple spreadsheet to get to the answer. Obviously, in an exam, you'd use a calculator to do the same piece of work. First of all, I input 5, then 85.7557, and the answer comes out as 17.15 for the population variance and 21.44 for the sample variance. The question did mention population, so I go to the Finlingo question and choose 17.15, and the answer is correct. So now let's try a sample variance question. Here, the sum of the variance column is 156.245, and the total number of returns is 3. Let's clear out the Excel spreadsheet and plug in the numbers. So I insert 3, then I insert 156.245, and the population variance becomes 52.08, but the sample variance is divided by 2 instead, and that comes out as 78.12. It does say sample in the question, so I choose 78.12 on the Finlingo page, and once again, the answer is correct. So that's about it for the variance of a single asset or single investment. Head on over now to finlingo.com to access the Finlingo question tool. Here you'll get an infinite number of questions on the variance of a single asset, along with hundreds of other question types to pass difficult financial analysis exams like the CFA. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.